there is some scriptures here from the Psalms 32 5 it says I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity have I not hid I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin it says in Proverbs 28 13 he that covers his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy this is from Daniel the book of Daniel who prayed for his people who were in exile he says and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people and so how many of us intercede for our friends and families through prayer because it's only God that can withhold us it's only God who can save us through Jesus Christ and so we must uh, know how to pray properly confessing our sin confessing our family sin, asking God to forgive us as the Bible says it says in Matthew and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins and so just as John the Baptist was baptizing people in the name of God they confessed their sin they confessed they were sinners before they were water baptized you must confess your sin that you're a sinner before you you seek God because we are not righteous we are unclean we are wicked we are sinful people but you when you seek God he is perfect blameless and righteous and Jesus Christ is the one is the bridge between man and God Mark 1 5 it says and they went out unto him all the land of Judah of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan confessing their sins so again they confessed their sins and they were forgiven by God it says in the Bible Jesus Christ is the high priest in heaven whom we confess our sin to don't confess it to any man who don't need to ask God for forgiveness and he shall forgive us through his son only this is true Christianity it says in 1 John 1 9 I'll just read out the whole chapter I think. First John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with him and us. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare it unto you that God is light in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Very interesting. It's what it says in the Bible. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I once knew a person who came to the Lord and he's very much into deliverance ministry. And I knew that he was filled with demons. That demons were getting him to do drugs and alcohol and all kind of different things. Then he got cleaned out, the demons came out of him, we did a deliverance prayer. But the thing that's left is your fleshly heart. We always have the flesh, we're dragging this flesh around with us in this life. And it has desires. We call it the, 
the desires of the flesh or the, the carnal desires but it is a mind of the flesh which wants to serve itself it's self-seeking self-serving but when a person is born of the spirit of god such a great love comes upon them and you begin to love others perhaps just even more than you love yourself i mean jesus says to fulfill all the commands love god with all your heart mind and strength and your neighbor is yourself most of us don't love god we love our sins we love money food position power music things of the world anything like that smoking drinking that's the things that we love but when a person's born again god gives us a new heart and a new mind he gives us a mind like god which is a spiritual mind he gives us eternal life he just doesn't want to bless you abundantly in this life jesus says i came to give you life in abundance but he's given you eternal life that means that you're going to live forever with god there's no greater promise than that if you've had an encounter with the living god that's the only place you truly want to be his kingdom is perfect not spoiled like it is down here and we've spoiled this earth it's full of sin wickedness death you know it's still got a beauty to it but it's uh, not god's original creation and jesus said a man must be born again to inherit the kingdom of god born of water as i've just been reading out that before they were baptized in water they confessed their sin to the lord there was no babies being baptized two thousand years ago it was living men and women who decided they wanted uh, their sins forgiven wanted a relationship with god wanted to understand what the bible was talking about and we can only get these revelations through coming to his son jesus christ jesus says i am the way the truth the life no man comes to the father but through me he is the son of the living god there's no other way to heaven hallelujah there's no other way to true blessings in this life other than through jesus christ as many people have testified many people giving their testimony about when they die whether they're atheist muslim jewish christian and they're showing that because they're not walking according to the ways of god that they'll be taken to hell and they'll stay in hell it's worth thinking about this is your eternal destiny maybe your career manager had a five minute conversation you decided to be whatever career you're in whatever thing you're trying to follow just now have you ever thought about your eternal life have you ever thought about where your soul is going to go when you die because if you have no desire for the things of god then you're dead in your sins jesus said i came to defeat sin and death at the cross at calvary jesus had to die for us do that work which he did on the cross at calvary to take away all the the curses to give us new life through the holy spirit to understand that god still heals people you don't have to suffer for your own sin jesus suffered for your sin on the cross yes this life can be suffering it can be hard but you don't need to you, you suffer for the kingdom suffer for jesus name don't suffer for the things of the flesh the bad decisions that you make the many times you were drunk and you you know you slept in the next day and you took drugs and alcohol you slept with that person you wish you'd never slept with all these regrets that we have in life it's called sin basically when you sin it brings regrets but when you choose jesus when you choose life you wish you had done it you know years and years and years ago that's what it's like coming to god there's no regrets when you come to jesus he wipes all your sin all the wickedness all the all the many thousands of sins that you've done in your life is built up a record in heaven against you and you probably feel paranoid you probably feel angry towards god you probably feel angry all these type of things many people feel like that until they just let go let go of the pride and just come to god ask for forgiveness and god often heals these people as well god often heals people as well but people that look for a healing I, I watched a video last week it was a girl who had motor neurons disease it was a number of diseases she had which meant her health deteriorated from a young age 
She ended up in a wheelchair. She couldn't hardly move anything. And then she, she learned that in two weeks she'd be kicked out the, the nursing home which she was in, that she was getting looked after. And at that point, just something in her said, God can heal me. She had a faith moment. If I seek God, maybe God will heal me. And she said in her mind, God will heal me. That's faith. You see, it says in the Bible, you can't please God without faith. Hallelujah. And so what actually happened was she prayed to the Lord. And within a few weeks, uh, this certain Christian man, she was at this uh, fellowship that she gave this phone directory to. Her. She looked through it, she picked this man and went to his church and asked the, the man of God to pray for her to come out of the wheelchair. And the, the minister said, I've never done any miracles, I've never seen any miracles before, but because you're asking for it, because you have faith, I'll pray for you. And he laid hands on her and prayed for this woman in the wheelchair. And within a couple of minutes, she stood up on her feet Okay, the testimony's there. Within two minutes, she was standing on her feet. This was a woman who was in a wheelchair for over 30 years. Many different diseases. And within about 20 minutes, she was walking around without any help. And that's faith. It says in the Bible, you cannot please God without faith. how much love that God has for you. doesn't matter what type of rebellion you get yourself into, God is always there. Many people have lost parents, friends, brothers, sisters, whatever it may be, but God is always there for us to console it. Hallelujah. I was reading out the Bible earlier, just talking about confessing your sin. A lot, a lot of us don't see ourselves as sinners, you know. We don't consider that we've actually broken God's laws, we've lied. 
we've stored, we've committed the goal to him, we have coveted. All of us have done these things, broken a Sabbath. Anybody ever broken a Sabbath before? No, nobody? No. Everybody's broken God's commandments. You know, God wanted a peculiar people to follow him. Because it's a very peculiar thing if you think about it. Why would you bother following God when you can just live any way you want? Choose whatever God you want to follow or not and just have a decent life. Live your life the way you want and then die and not really consider if you have sinned against God or against man what the consequences of that is. And God says, yes, there's consequences. When you sin, when you choose to do wickedness, lie, steal, all these things, if you think about it, they're called social commandments. So a lot of the three main religions, even Islam, Christianity, and that other one that I can never remember, they have, they have these social commands whereby people try to respect each other, try to be decent. But what about God? Where's God's respect? Where's God's praise and thanks and glory? Because first of all, Jesus said we should love God with all our heart, mind and strength. It's impossible to do that through the people that we are, the wicked, selfish sinners that we are. Jesus said a man must be born again to inherit his kingdom. He wants to renew your heart and renew your mind. And when you think about it, this nation of Scotland, once it was a Christian nation, I think it's still trying to hold on to his Christian status in the nations. But once it was one of the leading Christian nations of the world. And not only that, it was leading in science, leading in technology, leading in education, leading in everything. All the nations looked up to Scotland and the UK. I think per head, Scotland was one of the most productive nations and it could be still one of the most richest nations. We all know about, about what's happening. But to have true riches before God, He's talking about, do you have Jesus Christ? Do you realize that God's kingdom, the riches in God's kingdom is, is, you can't compare it to the riches down here on earth. Even if you have all the riches here on earth and you lose your soul, it's not worth it. Even I think the Beatles wrote that in one of their songs. They stole that from the book of Proverbs. A man can gain the whole world and lose their soul very much wisdom, more, wis more wisdom than all these uh, gurus out there and all these different religions. The Bible contains the wisdom written by the most wisest man who ever lived, Solomon, but he lost the fear of God. He started bowing before other altars, other gods, even though he was very wise. And he, he, he took 700 wives and many thousand concubines. The Bible says, that you shouldn't increase in your ways because you've become foolish towards God. you become very carnal. Man thinks he can be invincible. He can do what he wants. There's many religions that push. You can take as many waves as you want. You can lie. You can steal. Take as many waves. You still go to heaven and get your 70 virgins. Certain religions teach that. And a man becomes prideful. A man thinks he can do what he wants. And that man has got to go and give an account to his life before God. So in actuality, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, how many wives, children you've ever had. Have you given a, an account? You will have to give an account for your life before God. You will have to do that. And many preachers and many men of God have told each generation these things. In each one of these generations, some people like Lazarus died and he didn't go to hell he went to he went to a place uh, which was uh, a place of comfort that's where he went and then the rich man went to a place of torment because the rich man was given much by God the rich man was expecting like when you get riches you're meant to use it wisely you're meant to use it for people's benefit hallelujah well, that's uh, ideally what's, that's why people follow socialism, isn't it? They think that, oh, well, maybe if we just uh, set up a nice little government and these nice people, you know, we can just they, they take all our money. And that's what the communists in Russia thought, you know, we just set this, this thing up and it'll take care of all the poor and the homeless people. And once that communist government started to rule, they just says, right, there's the death camps. They just shot everybody. 
Same with the Nazis. They killed gypsies, homosexuals. They killed Jews. They killed Christians. They killed at least a million Christians as well. The Nazis. If you look back at the history. And so history is there so that we don't repeat these mistakes. And yet today we still think that socialism is going to work even though socialism has never worked in history. Every nation that follows socialism have got themselves into catastrophes, social cataclysms. So in a way, even though I voted for Scotland to be independent, I'm kind of glad in a way we've we're not got it yet because I think economically, I'm not sure if we've got it sorted out. Hallelujah. you got to look at nations that were um, why I'm talking about politics, I don't know. I'm out here preaching the gospel. But the thing is, the kingdom of heaven is perfect. Don't think that we can fix things down here on earth. Capitalism has worked to a good extent. Okay, it's very much focused on the individual. But each individual, each one of us have different values and different aspirations. And that's, how, that's why it works. When it becomes socialist, they tell you what to believe in and what to do. And then up to, up to so, uh, communism, it says in the Communist Manifesto that the first step to communism is socialism. How you doing? I don't know why I'm talking about politics. Does anybody want to sing? <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about there, man. Honestly, I just went off talking about politics and radio. <laughs> yeah.